the patient themselves felt that there's no point doing all these tests. There's no hope already. All he wanted me, whether I can make sure that he can go on for at least another two, three months just to see the birth of the grandchild. With the treatment that we gave him, he's still around. He's like three years down the line now and he's forever grateful. And he actually named the child after me. My name is Haris Abdul Rahman. I'm one of the hematologists at Subang Jaya Medical Center. I've been working in SGMC for the last 11 years. I've been in the field of hematology for the last 20 years after my training in the United Kingdom. For the last 15 or so years, I've been actually active in the field of stem cell transplant. I'm also the vice president of the Malaysian Society of Hematology. Hematology itself is a very big subject. You can start with one end being just the process of trying to cure somebody with uh, anemia and giving the blood transfusion. My main interest is actually in malignant side of hematology. So I treat leukemia, I treat lymphoma, and also at the end of that, one of the treatments that can make a difference in my patient would be to perform stem cell transplant. And that's one of my particular niche area that I really, really love. Usually I start with my ward run. My ward run usually takes about an hour and a half. Weekends, um, I tend to indulge in my hobby. Uh, one of the things uh, that I developed during COVID was actually to prepare videos. The idea is just to give back to the community. And they approached me to ask for questions and trying to actually get more information about their condition. So I came up with this series of videos. I love photography. I took up cycling. My wife did that as well, so we tend to do a lot of cycling around town. One of my young patients that actually came was only about 12 years old. The, the condition that he had was called chronic myeloid leukemia. Back in the 90s, somebody with chronic myeloid leukemia, especially at the end stage, only have about six, maybe 12 months to live. He was actually told initially that he only got a few months to live, but he was lucky that at the same time, there was a new drug that's being developed. Nowadays, people with chronic myeloid leukemia that I met in 2022 are still living now, and they don't even need chemotherapy. They just need medication. Hematology is not a static subject, so every two, three years, there will be something new. When I started in hematology in 2002, so nowadays we understand the diseases a lot deeper. We tend to understand the molecular side of our diseases. So the treatment now is more sophisticated than maybe five, 10 years back. On a personal level, I always see my patients as individual. They have their needs, they have their own life to live, they are a person, they are brothers, they are sisters, they are parents. So what one patient needs may not be the same as another person. So I always believe that when you treat your patient, you have to know them personally or at least have some connection. But there's a drawback to that because if things were to turn bad, you tend to take it more personally than otherwise. For me, that is a re very reasonable to pay because yes, you lose some, but the friendship that you gain from the patient, even though you lost them, still will stay with you forever. So, in the last 10 years, we've been actually exploring treating cancer without the use of the C word, chemotherapy. So nowadays, we try to treat our patient with targeted therapy, with checkpoint inhibitors, with monoclonal antibody. These are not buzzwords, but these are actually treatment options that we can offer to our, our patient. And in fact, the treatment that we are getting access to for our patient they are actually lucky in a sense that they get to experience the treatment five, ten years before it becomes mainstream. 
the patient themselves felt that there's no point doing all these tests. There's no hope already. All he wanted me, whether I can make sure that he can go on for at least another two, three months just to see the birth of the grandchild. With the treatment that we gave him, he's still around. It's like three years down the line now and he's forever grateful. And he actually named the child after me. Health screening is very important. You do not just do health screening to see whether you got cancer, but it also prevents you from having problems with cholesterol, with sugar diabetes, with heart problems. So the screening is not just for cancer, so screening is for everybody. And if you actually have any signals from your screening that actually force you to take the next step to do further tests, you must do it. Do whatever test that needs to be done. It could just be it's a non-cancer, but at least you have a peace of mind that it is not detected. Even if it's cancer, you are detecting it at the early stage and you are going to do much better than if you were leaving it alone. Cancer is a journey and if you work together, you will get to the end and it will be a success.